you guys had a, a really hot streak kind of death stretch in the fourth there, but what happened where you just couldn't close it out? Well, we, 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 unfortunately we met, missed a, a good looking three that would have cut it to one. And then we were all night long. We were a step behind on the close out from threes. We were closing out short all night and that wasn't the game plan. <clears throat> it seemed like we were always cutting it off short and, and not putting our hand up and contesting the shot properly. It's a team that can make some shots. Their backcourt is shot makers uh, from the three, but 21 threes is it's it's gonna you're gonna have a tough night to win that game, giving up 21 threes made. Fred. Hey Scott. Um I how how do you get how do you work towards getting Bertons's Bertons back into shape with the so few practices you guys are going to be able to have? Do they? Do they? Does it just have to be game minutes and that's it? It's going to have to be game minutes. I mean, that's, I played them a few extra minutes tonight because uh, we need them. You know, we need them. We. He's not a, a two for ten shooter. He's not. I mean, I see it. Saw it all last year up close. I see it in practice. I see it before games. Uh, but we need we need him to make shots, and he will. He will. I know he will. It's just a matter of time. It's unfortunately, we 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 have to go through it until he gets his legs ready and our game game ready. And it's going to take it's going to take some time. Um, it was he was getting there before he went out, and and then he's been out for a long time, and now he's it's going to take him some time. Uh, Rui. On the other hand, he, I thought he he made another jump tonight, so he he's getting he's getting closer to his his legs and. But we we still got it regardless. It's not DB's missing missing shots to lost this game. I mean he's going to make those shots, but we got it. We got to be able to guard the three point line. We've been we struggle with that, and tonight was a uh, closeout too many times, not properly, and and we've worked on it, and we know that we watched film before the game on it. We just didn't do it. Neil. Scott, when Covington and Trent get off to the start that they had in the first half, and then in the second half, they come back and do the exact same thing after the Portland timeout, why aren't guys realizing that the closeout needs to be better and it's still allowing it to happen? Well, I mean, that's that's what we were figuring that out. I mean, we, we, we had this is the second game in a row. We've had a bad start. Uh, you can't get down 20 points and expect to come back. We did it once. We almost did it tonight. Had a chance to cut it to one with three and a half or so to go. The wide open right corner three. Uh, but we we can't get we can't get down by 20 points to start start games and it just takes a lot out of you. It takes a lot out of you when you when you're when you're trying to get back in the game shape. It just takes a lot out of you, but we we were slow tonight. We were just sluggish for whatever reason. We had a great win, a big win. A fun team win, a comeback win last game, and then we just came out flat in the first uh, first quarter. Gave up 40 points and I think six from nine from the three. Fred, do you have another? Yeah, I, I just wanted to follow up. Um, Davis was one of those guys who was who was struggling on his three point defense tonight. Do do you consider making personnel changes in those situations? How, how do you choose to, to leave him in the game? What's that thought process like? Well, I know I know we need his shooting and we need his play. He's a competitive guy. He's not, I'm not gonna just, I'm not gonna quit on him. I know, I know what he's gonna be able to do for us and, and he will. And he hasn't done it uh, consistently yet, but it's gonna, he's gonna get in the, he's gonna get in the rhythm where He's not going to miss a shot for an entire month. And I'm looking forward to that. He's looking forward to that. I'm sure knowing him, he's probably getting extra shots right now. Uh, he wants to play better, but it was not about him. Uh, tonight's net game wasn't all about him missing shots or closing out. It was everybody. Everybody participated in this loss, and we have to be better, myself included. Zach? Coach, um, Rui's shot was on tonight. He was 10 of 12. But is this a result of his legs being back, as you mentioned a little bit earlier, or, or confidence being back, or both? I think it's both. You know, you, you, you kind of you forget about that. This is a confident 
driven game. And if you don't have confidence or the coach doesn't give you confidence or your teammates doesn't give you confidence or your support group doesn't give you confidence, it's hard to, it's hard to get it. That's a very competitive, very, really good players, but I think is, is he's getting better condition and his confidence and he knows, he knows we believe in him and it was good. We need him. We need him and we need everybody. We need everybody to have a better start. Like I said, we were lax a days ago on the defensive end. They made that the, the first shot. It was a lucky shot by Covington. Then, then, he, then we made a mistake on the second three on the left slot. But we have to be better, and, and we have to have a better start. We don't have the luxury not to have a, a good start and come back, uh, like, as like some teams in the league that have. Jay Rochelle. Hey, Coach, at 4-13 and 13 now with a lot of more games to be played, uh, how, how do we move forward after yesterday's, you know, big, um, big win and then today's, you know, big loss? At what point, I mean, or how do you move forward? How do you encourage the guys to move forward? Well, it's, it's our job. You know, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for us still. There's a lot of games left. I mean, we don't want no, no, no one in our locker room uh, want to lose want to lose any games but you still got to keep doing your job you got to play your minutes hard you got to be ready to play when when you do get called if you haven't played in a while um i mean we have a game tomorrow night uh, like i've said before we need games and it's a it's a dream it's a dream part of the schedule for guys that love to play and i love the coach and i know we have guys that love to play we want to play better we know we will play better but it's also, I mean, we know it's tough too. There's a lot of games too now. We got, it's not like we're all playing all at home. It's traveling uh, late night, like tonight. We probably won't get into the hotel probably till 4 a.m. But you still got to get your, uh, as much rest and hydrate and eat and get your nap and be ready to play tomorrow night against a very hungry team that just ha they had a tough loss uh, last night. Brad, um, Scott obviously talked a lot about the slow start you guys had in the first quarter. What do you attribute the slow start to? And coming off of Sunday especially, what can you kind of guys do to, to not do that in the future? Uh, first place, my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Um, it was inexcusable in the first quarter. We uh, got out to a slow start, lack of days ago. We were late to everything. We were late on our defensive rotations. Uh, offensively, we weren't playing fast enough. Um, we're playing hard enough. So it was, they were just kicking our ass. They came, they were, they got their butts kicked last night by Milwaukee and they came in tonight with a different mindset out of the gate. So that's what happened. You guys have been so close in so many games this season, able to close them out like on Sunday. What was the difference tonight? What's not going right at, late in the fourth quarter? Getting stops. I and mean, that's what it was. Uh, we, we, we allow guys too much freedom. Uh, to kind of do what they wanted to do, lining up threes. Uh, we were, like I said before, we were still late to rotations. Uh, they got a lot of open threes tonight. That's what we couldn't guard the three-point line. Um, and then Dame, Dame had it going later on down the stretch. He was just picking out who he wanted and, you know, attacking guys. And we got we to gotta be better and accept those challenges, uh, help each other better, and, and close out games because we were down, what, four – Towards the end, like we were right there. So just a few players here and there on a the defensive end, we gotta we gotta clean up. Matt Moderno. Hey Brad, uh how's the communication on the court defensively? It, it's hard to tell, you know, remotely and, and watching over TV. It's been good. It could be better. Uh it'll be a lot better. Um I think at times sometimes we get too caught up in just everybody trying to make the right play, everybody trying to trying to contribute, which is great, but uh, we, we can't do it, you know, individually. It has to be a collective effort. And, uh, you know, communication is, you know, the biggest thing to successful defenses and successful teams, you know, holding each other accountable. Um, guys knowing, you know, personnel when they come into the game, uh, knowing the flow of the game, you know, how guys are playing, you know, how the refs are calling the game. And, you know, just kind of really basing that off of, okay, that's how we got the guard. It's, you know, they're letting us be physical. Uh, but if we're not talking, you know, we can't get any of those things done. You know, that's, that explains a lot of the mishaps on switches, the mishaps on rotations, just because it's a lack of communication. Thanks. 
Fred Katz. Uh, Brad, Brad, this might tie in a little bit to the previous answer, but you, you guys had a lot of moments tonight where you kind of overhelped off of shooters and then whomever it was, was a bunch of people who were just late to close out on those shooters. Is that, does that tie into the communication thing or is that a separate issue? Oh, it's kind of separate, you know, that's just, that's just knowing the game, you know, getting the feel of it. Uh, see, Dame was, he was kind of, he was doing a good job of reading it all night. You know, if the weak side guy was coming over, he was getting off the ball, swinging into the weak side. And uh, they got a team full of shooters, you know, so you got to tip your hat off to them. They shot, the, they shot lights out tonight. Uh, but I think that's kind of different. You know, that's not necessarily a communication thing. That's, you know, knowing the game, knowing, you know, trust our bigs to make plays against the guards at the rim, you know, versus over help. And last question to Neil. Brad, Scott talked about pregame, you guys were looking at their three point shots, saying that you have to close out. Why is that just not translating to the game in the first half and then even the second half after you guys theoretically make adjustments, still they're getting those looks? I don't know. I wish I had to answer, Neil. Uh, I think we would have won a game if we had to answer. Uh, I, don't, I don't know what it is. It's, you know, you kind of, Kind of got to drill it into guys' heads until we all get it. Uh, but for whatever reason, you know, we're not we're not consistent with it. You know, we can't beat a good team in Brooklyn and then come out and lay an egg tonight. You know, we got to be – consistency has been our Achilles heel. We got to be consistent. What have these last three weeks been like for you, and what has this process of, of returning to the court been like? Well, it wasn't easy. I mean, uh, we had that all, all that COVID situation with a lot of guys out. And, yeah, it wasn't easy for me. It was two weeks that uh, I couldn't do anything. I couldn't be on the court. So, for me, uh, not being on the court and doing my job is hard. It's hard, it's, especially when you're uh, you, when you're a rookie in your first year, year here. And, you know, you want to work out, you want to improve, and, and it didn't happen. But, um the getting back wasn't also easy because you didn't do anything for two weeks. And then you need to come back and get back your rhythm. And um, you, you, I have great coaches around me that helps me uh, do that and get back in shape as quickly as I can. It's, and as you guys see uh, from the first game that I came back and now there's a lot of difference. So I think we did a good job and hopefully I'm not gonna do that process again. Neil? Denny, can you elaborate a little bit more on the first game back? You had a little bit of struggle today. You had a little bit better performance. Um, how was just, was the first game more just not being in a groove for a while? Or can you take us through that? Um, I think I, I just, I wasn't in a rhythm. Like I, I, I had my rhythm before and then I was not with the team for like three, four games. So um, I think my rhythm just like starting to come back. Uh, it wasn't easy. My, my, my shape was not that good in the first game. Um, I tried to do my best, but uh, I wasn't 100% uh, there yet. And today, um, I just I came fo more focused and I stepped it up. Ava? I'm just wondering how you're feeling physically after that game. Obviously, like you said, you were out for so long then kind of had to work your way back. Do you feel like you're at full strength yet or kind of where do you you judge where you're at with that? Can you repeat, can you repeat the question, please? I don't hear it. Can you make it louder? Sure. Um, I'm just wondering how you're feeling physically after tonight since you obviously you were off for so long, kind of wondering, I guess, how you judge your conditioning, your strength, where, where you feel um, like you're at. I just pushed. I just pushed more than I could so I can get back and help my team as best as I can. So um, I don't think I had a problem with strength wise. So um, whenever I could have uh, done drills to, to keep me, keep my uh, my um, physicality, physicality in shape, I did it. And it was just a stamina not running for a long time, but it's coming back. Yeah, kind of on that note, you obviously had so long without basketball. What did you do to to pass the time. Um, it was good. It was good time to be with my family a little bit, uh, to hang around with them also. Um, but other than that, you know, if, uh, all I mean, I, I was just home. So I was watching movies, watching my guys play, my team, and, and, and cheering them from home. And uh, you know, it's not nothing that I can do when I have this protocol. 